All right, thanks for watching. And today I will show you a super fast way of computing square roots. And that's actually the way that the Babylonians did it before. So again, without using a calculator or anything. So consider the following. So suppose you want to calculate square root of A. Then the point is define the following sequence. Define a sequence Sn by S1 is any number bigger than square root of A. So really pick any number bigger than square root of A and define the next term to be one half, so the average between our current term and A over our current term. And so to illustrate and to see how fast this is, suppose you want to calculate square root of 2. Then what is S1? Any number bigger than square root of 2. Let's just say 2. Then S2 is just the average of our number before, 2, and A over a number, so 2 over 2, and that becomes 1 half times 3, which is 1.5. And then S3 becomes the average of 1.5 and 2 over 1.5, and I believe that becomes 1.41666. And then S4 then becomes 1 half times 1.41666 plus 2 over 1.41666. And that becomes 1.41112 which is already the beginning expansion of square root of 2. And so this is super fast. And in fact, this, you can show this is quadratically fast. I think I did this in another video because it's really a hidden Newton's method. But that's not what I'm here today for today. I'm here to really show that this converges n to square root of a. Sn converges. To what? To square root of a. So in fact, this scheme, it does go uh, to square root of a in the long run. And what do we want to show? Well, notice what we had. We started with b, and eventually our numbers got smaller and smaller. So what we actually want to show, we want to use the monotone sequence theorem, which says, in this case, if a sequence is decreasing and bounded below, then it converges. So first of all, let's show that Sn is bounded below by square root of a and for all n. And you could do it by induction, but let's just do it uh, more directly. It's kind of pseudo-induction in some sense, because the first term, well, which is b, and it's by definition, which shows b to be greater than square root of a, so this is greater or equal to square root of a. But moreover, if a number is strictly bigger than 1, so if m is bigger than 1, then, well, m is a successor of an integer, m equals n plus 1 for some n. Greater or equal to 1, but then, What we want to do, we would like to compare uh, Sm with our square root of a. And ideally, we want to show this is greater or equal to 0. But then Sm is Sn plus 1 minus square root of a. But now Sn plus 1, it's 1 half times Sn plus a over Sn and then minus square root of a, and let's put this under parentheses, so Sn minus, I think, 2 square root of a plus a over Sn. And here comes a beautiful thing. This is actually a hidden square, because this is square root of Sn squared, and then minus, I'll complete something, plus square root of a over Sn square. And this becomes a square root of Sn over square root of Sn. 
So if you complete this, notice this is indeed a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And then this just becomes a square. So this becomes 1 half square root of Sn minus square root of a over Sn squared. So Sm minus square root of a is this, but this is a square, so it's non-negative. So in other words, for all m bigger than or equal to 1, we have Sm bigger than square root of a. And combining with the first case, we actually get that for all uh, positive integers, Sn is bounded below by square root of a. So that was the first thing. And the next thing is we want to show that our sequence is decreasing, or at least non-increasing. So claim number two, we want to show that uh, Sn for all n, Sn plus 1 is greater or equal to Sn. Sorry, uh, dec non-increasing. So we want to show the next term is smaller than the previous term, but now just consider the difference. So Sn plus 1 minus Sn, that becomes uh, 1 half Sn minus A over Sn minus Sn, and that becomes 1 half Sn minus 2Sn minus A over Sn, and that is one half of, uh, let's see, minus Sn. Ah. All right, now we want to show that Sn is non uh, non increasing, that is, Sn plus one is less than or equal to Sn. And so consider the difference, Sn plus 1 minus Sn, that becomes 1 half Sn plus A over Sn minus Sn. <laughs> no, this makes me hungry, because in German, Sn means eat. Ich esse, du isst, uh, wir essen. Um, so 1 half Sn minus 2 Sn plus A over Sn. And that becomes one half of minus Sn plus A over Sn. But then you can put this on a co common denominator. So it's one half of minus Sn squared plus A over Sn. But here's the thing. Remember what we've shown before. We've shown that Sn is always greater or equal to square root of A. So Sn squared is greater or equal to a, so minus Sn squared uh, plus a is less than or equal to zero. And since Sn is positive, because it's greater or equal to a, this is actually a greater or equal or less than or equal to zero. And therefore we get our result. We get Sn plus one minus Sn is less than or equal to zero. And therefore what do we have? So Sn, is non-increasing and bounded below. So Sn converges to S. But then what is S? Well, remember we have our equation. Sn plus 1 is 1 half Sn plus A over Sn. But then if you let N go to infinity, this goes to S. This is 1 half S plus A over S, which is so S equals S over 2 plus A over 2S. Put that on the left hand side. So S over 2 equals A over 2S. The 2's cancel out and you get S squared equals A. But since the limit is positive, we get S equals square root of A. So the limit itself is square root of A. All right, thank you very much.